Hi, I'm Anthony, Managing Member of Exceptional Accounting, and today we're going to look at two basic ways to enter data into QuickBooks, uh, with the end result being uh, having some accurate financial statements for your company. So, first two ways and two items that we're going to look at are, um, if you come over here, go to Company, and go to general journal entry this is the first way that you can enter transactions into QuickBooks this is a more advanced and more complex way um, and I don't recommend this for people that don't have accounting backgrounds or aren't familiar with the dual method of entry for accounting these debits and credits but in any case I'm gonna go over it briefly so that you are familiar and just know how to use it um, Right here, of course, you're going to put the date of the transaction. If you're trying to rec if you're trying to enter data from your bank statement, the date of the transaction you're entering would go there. These entry numbers, you can have a number there. For example, you could start with one, and it could go every time you enter new transactions. QuickBooks will increase it to two, three, four, and so on. Um, you can do that if you'd like to search for transactions later using that number. Not necessary, but you can have that there. Generally, the uh, adjusting entry box should be unchecked. The only reason you would have that checked is if you're performing an adjusting entry. And if you don't know what that is, you probably shouldn't be doing it anyways. But just um, quickly, an adjusting entry is a type of entry that will be made at the end of a month or perhaps the end of a year for uh, accrual accounting, if you're, if you're converting from a cash to accrual accounting, um, or any other type. but usually you should keep that off. The first column here is the account and of course you would choose the account uh, that you're dealing with so for example if you're trying to do a deposit you would pick the checking account put in the debit amount and in the memo which is the next column right here you could put something in there if you want to elaborate on what transaction you're putting in. The name is very important as uh, the name function is utilized by QuickBooks to organize all of the transactions. So for example, if I'm doing a deposit and I choose a customer, then when I go to the customer center, for example, and I look up Carol Karakin, whatever that name is, uh, <laughs> you can um, uh, then find all the transactions that are are linked and utilize this name. So it's important that you do this. Um, in this case we're doing a deposit so you we've chosen a customer but let's suppose that we were doing an uh, expense. So you know automotive repair come down here and we choose a, a vendor. Mendoza Mechanical. Um, that way, same thing, if you went to the vendor Mendoza Mechanical, you would be able to find this transaction under that name. That's important. Um, one other thing that's in, important to realize uh, for future use, we're going to talk about this in more detail, but I'm just going to skim over it. Um, if you are, uh, let's say you have an expense that you incur on behalf of a client, and you need to reimburse uh, yourself and subsequently invoice the client for that charge. Instead of choosing a vendor, if you choose a customer and you're talking about using an expense right here, this little box pops up, billable. And you can check you can check that or uncheck that depending on what you'd like to do. If it's something that is that needs to be billed to a customer, then you can check that and then subsequently when you invoice it will it will be there and you can bill them for it. Notice that I have chosen a customer but when I choose a vendor which is just a normal expense you know I, I went and got my car repaired went to great statewide bank to get that done or wherever whatever vendor you choose uh, the billable item goes away it's only when you choose a customer. Now that's uh, again, if you're not dealing with invoices, you're not invoicing customers, you're just trying to get the data in the system, you don't have to worry about that and, and billing clients again. So that's just a, a little tip to let you know. Last column right here is the class column. Um, in a nutshell, 
the class system is a way for you to tag transactions and then separate them so that they can be reported differently. Uh, for example, when you create financial statements, you can use the and organize the financial statements based on a class basis. So that's probably very confusing and that didn't explain everything. So let me just uh, do an example. Let's suppose you have three stores and you want to be able to know what revenue and expenses are associated with each store. Well, the class system would be a great way to do that. All you would do is create a class for each one. You could do store one, store two, store three. And then as you are entering the revenue and expenses, just make sure you put a class there. And then you can put a, um, you can create a profit and loss by class, which will then uh, separate it out and you can actually see how each store is doing. In this case, in the example file, they have separated it out by, uh, I guess, type of service. So there's design, landscaping, maintenance, overhead. That's another way you could do it if you wanted to do that way and somehow separate it out. If your company has different divisions, product divisions, service divisions, you could do that as well. Um, it's, a, it's a neat tool um, if you want additional information about your business. And that, in a nutshell, is the general journal system. Uh, again, a bit more complex. Uh, need to know what you're doing for that. So we're going to talk about a more, uh, a, an easier type of system for beginners and for those who aren't don't have an accounting background. If you go to banking up here and use the use register button right there. Um, you can pick the account that you want to enter transactions, so we're just going to do the main checking account. And this is what pops up. This is a register. Um, it's one of the ways that you can view, edit, and sift through the activity uh, of a certain account. So right now, this what we're looking at, we chose the checking register. So we're looking at the checking account in QuickBooks. So this is where we're going to enter our, our our activity right here. Kind of the same with the journal entry. You're going to pick the date of the transaction, the number. If there is a check that needs to, uh, that for example, you wrote a check, you want to put the check number in there, you could put that in there. You could also leave it blank. The next one, this big box right here, is the payee. So depending on what this is, if it's a deposit or if it's a payment, um, you can just pick what it is. So for example, let's do a vendor. So computer services by DJ. Um, payment column right here as it states deposit or payment you put in the amount so 150 we'll say comes down here to the account it automatically populated that because it remembered that we've done that before but if you wanted to look around and find something else you could just scroll down and find something um, notice that also you can start writing something and QuickBooks will populate so for example professional fees tab and then when you press the tab button it populates it for you um, this last section here is the memo if you want to put something in there you know like party on uh, party at friends I don't know whatever you want to put there you can put something in there if you'd like to elaborate and then you just press record and there is our transaction right there so fairly simple um, easy to enter um, we can do another one. So let's say we want to do a deposit. Um, payee, we pick the get out of the vendor section. We go to customer, price Gwen. Um, we're going to do the deposit for 150 and pick the account. In this case, we would pick an expense, or excuse me, an income account because that's what it is. Uh, it is possible that it could be something else, but most likely if it's income, money for services you have provided, you're just going to pick the appropriate income account and maybe put in a memo if you'd like. You don't have to, again, um, and then just press record. Now, one thing to notice and remember is that you cannot put uh, a payment and deposit on the same transaction line. So as an example, let's suppose you bought something um, and you paid a thousand dollars for it and subsequently you receive a refund from that company for two hundred dollars let's say you know so you you paid a thousand got a refund for two hundred you would not put even though all this other information is maybe the same 
except for the account, you know, the payee, you can't put payment 1,000, deposit 200. That doesn't work. You'd have to do two separate transactions. First the payment, and then another transaction with the deposit. So this is, um, again, this is the just a general way of how to enter information in the system. Um, now, something you need to understand is that this is the most simple and basic way to get information into QuickBooks. And this tutorial assumes that you are not using any of the bill management functions in QuickBooks and you're not using any of the invoice functions in QuickBooks. Um, I'm just assuming that you all you want to do is you have your bank statement in front of you, you and you're just trying to get that information into QuickBooks um, as quick as possible. And this is a way that you can do that. Um, if you are using the bill functions and the invoice functions in QuickBooks, then this will not work because you need to use specific functions in QuickBooks to recognize that you've paid a bill or that a customer has paid you. If you don't use those functions, then QuickBooks will assume that the customer has not paid for you. Paid, uh, paid you yet or that you have not paid that bill. So that's something to be aware of and so this will, um, uh, you know, it's just a, a simple way to, to start going and getting that data entry completed so you can get into QuickBooks. Now there are other ways to enter uh, transactions into QuickBooks. For example, you can link up your bank account with a download so that you can download transactions automatically which is very nice and saves a lot of time. However, some banks don't allow this, and some banks, um, you know, some people just don't want to set it up. <laughs> so I'm just going through a basic method, and at any time or another, we're gonna, you'll, you'll be, you'll want to be familiar with this system. So uh, that's that's that. Just two basic ways to enter your transactions in the system. Um, thanks for watching. Please visit exceptionalaccounting.com for more tips as we upload more movies. And also, please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Again, thanks for watching.